Hi, good morning. It's Julia from Crosspatch in sunny Wales. Forgive the wet hair, I've just been for a jog and I'm rushing as normal to try and get everything done. Um, today we're going to talk about cathedral windows, which has been a slight obsession of mine for a long time. Um, sort of a, a preamble to the big boys. Um, so we're going back to basics. We don't need any templates for these. Um, they're pretty easy to make, although they look complicated, and I'm going to show you the way that I make them. Let me just show you what I've done, the new ones I've done recently. So here's a cushion I made, so using Moda Fabric Ops. So those of you who know me know I do lots of little packs of squares, little two and a half inch packs, and these are perfect for cathedral windows. You have to trim them down a bit, but it's given you a range of fabric. Um, which you can use, and they're usually about three pounds a pack, so they're good value. So here's another one, Moda Fabric, this is Bliss by Three Sisters. So basically all this is, is the cushion panel folded in half with some borders around it. So it's really easy to make. And the squares you've got left from your little mini charm pack, just join them together to make your bag handles. Um, before I go any further, what I always forget to say is Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you watching my randomness. Um, please subscribe. It doesn't mean you haven't got to pay any money. It just means that you're following my channel. Um, and tell people about it. Uh, if you're interested in anything that I'm showing you, there's patterns and charms and all sorts on the website, which is cross-patch.co.uk. Okay, let's get on with it. So that was my bag. This is one I made years and years ago. And I made this by hand and this was using French General. So I don't know how many years ago I made this. It must be, let's see what the collect. So it's the original, I think it's got a bit of the old Rouenery in. So it's about 10 years old, this bag. So this one was made by hand. If I put it up close to the camera, you might just be able to see. Um, and these other ones I've made on machine because my hands, because I'm so old now, the old hands are getting sore. So you can see on this one, I've done this all by machine. So let's start. The way I make mine, I start with calico and I use eight inch squares. So you want to cut yourself, if you want to make something this size, cut yourself 16 eight inch squares. So there's my eight inch square. So you get your eight inch squares and you fold them in half like so. So you've got a rectangle. Once you've done that, you sew a seam down each side of your rectangle. Um, use quarter inch seams so they're all the same. When you've done that, do all 16 and then pull them ap apart in the middle, like so. And then you fold them across the top. So fold them across the top and butt the seams up in the middle and then fold one each side and then you'll sew from each end to about an inch either side of that seam across the top and you'll end up with this. So you can see there's a gap in the middle there for turning and you'll turn this right sides out. So turn it right sides out and press it and you'll end up with this. So there's a flat side that side, that's where all your seams are. So the bit where your seams are, you're going to fold each corner into the middle, like so, and press them well. So when you've done that, you're going to end up with this. Now, at this point, if you're sewing by hand, you can sew with a little cross stitch these bits in together in the middle. So this is just if you're sewing by hand. And then if you're sewing by hand, you'll do that with all your 16 squares and then you will slip stitch them together. So slip stitch them together, sew those down, put them right sides together and slip stitch them down the back seam. So I do them in rows of four. So in the bag, you will want four rows of four squares. Once you've done that, there's just two here, just for an example. Once you've done that, I've slip stitched them on the back. You'll get your little two and a half inch squares and you'll need to trim them down to just over two inch to put in the middle. Now, another thing I want to say about that is I've now discovered now I've remade them that they look much better if you put a bit of iron on wadding on the back. 
So put a bit of um, Vaseline H630 I've put on the back of all my little squares. Okay. So put your, if you're, this is again, this is just hand sewing. You've put your little square in the middle, you've pinned it, and then all you do is ease over these sides and slip stitch them down. So I'll hold it a bit closer to the camera so you can see. Until you've done, you've covered all your rows. Now I'm going to go back and show you how to do the machine way and then you'll see how it comes together when I've told you how to prepare them by machine. So I'm just putting the hand to one side and we're going back to machine piecing now. So machine piecing. When you've got all your squares prepared, as I said, leave all your flappy bits open. So to join them together by machine, all you do, you'll get two squares, put them the flat sides together so you've got the, the folded seams in the middle. And then all you need to do is sew down these lines that you've steamed, that you've pressed. So you get a whole row of them like that. So do four rows of four squares sewn together like that. And then when you've done your rows, you're then just going to join the rows together on these seams. So you will have Here's two. I'm just doing them in twos just for ease of showing you. So here's two blocks. Put your pointy, put your pointy bits up like that and then just sew along these seams. So sew all the way across, although there's probably like a little gap as you go along. You've sewn on your press line, sew all the way along. I do a, like when I get to this V bit here, I do a couple of extra stitches on the join there. So when you've joined them, you'll end up with a piece like this. Obviously you're going to have four rows of four, I've just got two rows of two here just to show you. Okay, so you will then, you'll get your squares and you need to place them where you've joined the seams along here, you're going to place your squares in there. So the same as you did with hand sewing, but you just ease your seams over, get it under the sewing machine, these will need trimming down a little bit, and then ease, ease the seams over and just go round as close to the edge as you can. I've just used a normal sewing foot on my sewing machine and sew them down by your machine. And they will look like this. So that's just two rows of two. So you're going to do four rows of four if you want to make the bag. Um, when I finish this, what I do with the finished panel is I go round with my machine all the way round which just stabilises it. I'll show you the back so you can see the back as well. I'll hold this a bit closer to the camera so you can see where I've folded it over. So the fabrics I've used in these are the French vintage. So there's like mini charm packs of these on the website. Um, so if you want to make a cushion, there's my finished cushion panel. All I've done is I've put a uh, three and a half inch borders all the way around my finished panel. Now with the finished panel, because you've you've put wadding on the back of your fabrics, you don't need to put any wadding on them, on the back of the finished panel, because there's already wadding in these bits. So it's a bit like quilt as you go. But on the seams, the borders, I've um, ironed again, the iron on wadding onto the borders before I've sewn them onto the cushion panel. And then I've just done an envelope back on the back. Uh, so there you go, just an envelope back on the back. Um, the bag, you make that exactly the same way, three and a half inch borders all the way around, and then you just fold the bag in half. And on the sides, all I've done is I've put some ties on the sides there, so the ties on the side when I put the borders on I've caught them in the seams when I put the borders on so basically make the cushion panel get some ties and put them just left over fabric that I had I've made into ties and then I've put a tie on the back in the back panel and just a button on the front and I used I had a load of leftover squares so I had I think I had 18 left over uh, from this pack, the Bliss Charm Pack, Mini Charm Pack. So I've used nine for each handle and some leftover lining fabric for the lining of the handle. Um, if you look on my YouTube channel, there's um, 
a whole splurge on making bag handles. So I always make mine this way and that will tell you how to make the bag handles if you want to make this bag. Um, if you want the pattern, the pattern's under Cathedral Window bag pattern on my website. So that's all I've got to say about Cathedral Windows at the moment. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of stuff that is coming soon. So I made a stitchery bag. Again, can you tell I like this fabric? So this is like a stitchery bag I've made. So the stitcheries and the charm packs are all on the website. So I used a full charm pack and I cut it up. So it's all the French vintage slash Dutch heritage fabrics. That's the front, that's the back. So there's the like the busy bee panel and that's the flowers panel. And then when you open them up, there's just pockets there. So you can put a little cutting board in or whatever you want in for your sewing. Um, one thing I'm excited about that I've just received this week from Aurifil is my own threads. So these are Perle threads for stitchery because I'm having trouble getting red um, thread for stitchery. So there's four different reds and there's a variegated thread in here. So let's open them up so you can see. And they're really nice to stitch with. So there's four different reds. So there's a like there's a bright Christmassy red, there's a dark red, there's a pinky red, and then there's another dark darker red. And then there's a nice variegated that's got sort of goes red to peach to cream, just to mix it up a bit because I don't like just plain thread. And this is I've stitched this just to give you an idea of what they look like together. I stitched this up the other day. Um, and the other things that are coming soon, I've got new stitchery panels coming. There's three new hearts, which I need to send to Neil today at Craft Yourself Silly to print for me. And these are the ones he's done for me so far. So I drew all these when I got back from Malvern. So here's one. These are taken from this one. It was an old cruel work um, piece I found. I think it was in my auntie's sewing box, my great auntie's sewing box. So there's one. Uh, these are just random ones that I doodled. There's another one. Uh, this was, I bought an antique fire screen down in Carmarthen in the Antique Centre. Um, for those of you local, the one down by Matalan, next to the Citroen garage. And I drew the design off the panel and sent it to Neil to print up for me. And I'm really pleased with how that turned out. And finally, there's another hearty sort of doodly one. Um, there we go. So I am away with the grandchildren now for a few days and these are coming with me to stitch. Not that I think I'll get much stitched, but there we are. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next. What am I doing next? Ah, that's what I was going to show you, was the snail trail. Snail trail's coming soon. We've got the existing snail trail templates on the website. But I've been making bags and I started cutting out a French vintage quilt in it last night. So this is just one of the bags done in the bliss uh, with the plaited handles on it. Um, but I've got a quilt that I'm supposed to be cutting out this morning um, before I go away. So it's ready to sew when I get back. Um, so that will be the next uh, YouTube video. Um, if you're watching this now and you're living in the west side of the country, carry on enjoying the sun. I'm enjoying it. We're making the most of it in West Wales because we're not used to it. Three weeks of hot sun, it's getting a bit much. Everyone keeps saying, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to rain tomorrow, and it's not. And there's no rain in the forecast and the grass is dying. And I'm just hoping all my beans and my peas and my tomatoes survive. Um, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot.